welcome to the Esmeric Art Studio. Today we're going to be making butterflies using paper as well as power pole and it's going to be the first component of a project I will be working on over the next couple of, I want to say weeks, but I think it's going to be months that I'm going to be working on that. In the end it will have the um, power pole butterflies, it will also have some sculpturing with power pole and then some metal embossing and most probably a little bit of mixed media as well. I'm still working on how this is all going to come together. But the first component today, we're going to be focusing on how to make the butterflies. So what are we going to need for our paper butterflies? We are going to need some paper. This is um, store-bought handmade paper. I wanted to use some that I've made myself, but I didn't have enough. And the color that I had enough of was purple and green. And after doing a couple test ones, I realized that would have been too thick as well. So this is a fairly um, thin one. I would say about the thickness of um, copier paper. So that's the one that I've used. You are going to need your power pole. It is a um, using the transparent power pole. So a power pole is a fabric hardener or a textile hardener. And if you apply it correctly, you let it cure and seal it, it can actually go outside in your garden as a statue. It's mostly used for um, making statues, but there's so many other uses for it as well. Although the transparent power pole that we are gonna be using on our butterflies, that one is, um, how can I say, sort of debatable whether it is weather resistant. Uh, so we're going to need, as I said, the transparent power pole. We're going to need a stir stick because we always need to stir the power pole before we start using. We are going to use a couple of skewer sticks just to maneuver and help us with that. And, um, oh, of course, the designs of the butterfly. So what I have done is I have already cut out a couple of the butterflies and um, I will link a, or down below will be a link where you can actually download the template for the butterflies. We're going to need some toothpicks because we're going to be using the toothpick as the um, body of the butterfly. And to cut the toothpicks, you can either use a little cutting mat, self healing cutting mat with an X Zecto knife. Or what I personally find work best is this little long nose pliers. It had sort of have sort of that part there at the end, and that works perfectly for me. So that's what I have been using. And then sanding paper. So the sanding paper is just to once you have cut your um, toothpick, just to make it even again. And we're going to need a paintbrush so that we can paint the power pole onto our. Um, butterflies or the paper butterflies and then some other PVC pipe or plastic um, cylindric kind of thing so that once we are done we can drape our butterflies over there to give it some shape. So power pole does not adhere to plastic um, so when you don't have a plastic pipe or a PVC pipe what you can do is I've just taken one of these little mailing tubes and you can just wrap it with plastic wrap and you can drape your little butterfly over there and it will do exactly the same thing. So if you're not familiar with power pole you can go to Annette's website it is orange wirer.ca I will link it below and um, that is where I did my certification course um, to become a, a power pole teacher and there's lots of information on um, power pole on her website okay so let's get all the things together and open and stir it and then we can start well, I'm stirring this um Power pole. Something I forgot to mention is you're also going to need a pail of water with you because it, um, it's best practice not to let the power pole go down your drain. It is um, it can clog up the grain, the drain. Power pole is not toxic at all. 
it is just because it's a hardener it's a fabric hardener or a textile hardener it can eventually get hot so i just throw mine out i have a spot in the garden where i usually throw all my out you can also let it dry and just you know scoop it out and put it in the garbage so something else that you will need as well is having a wet rag with you and just keep on wiping your fingers because it can get a little bit sticky um yeah i think that is about it i think this is stirred well and so let's get started with our but the little butterflies so the first thing we need to do is we are going to cut our um toothpick so just measure it more or less where you would like it to be and then just take your whatever you are going to use i've used this and i'm just going to clip it like that and take my sand oh, take my sanding paper and i'm just going to sand it So yesterday when I started making some of the butterflies, I've tried a couple of different ways. Um, I will show you the other materials that I've used and how those butterflies have turned out. But as for the fastest way to make these butterflies, because I've decided, you know, going through this exercise, I can just as well make some extra and keep them afterwards for another project because you can always paint them later on it's not to say that you have to use them as is so this is now sanded and let me just wipe here so yeah as i said i've tried a couple of ways so one of the ways that i was thinking of doing it is packing a few out and power pole paint them with power pole a couple at a time but no nope, that didn't work in the end just working on one butterfly at a time is definitely the best oh i forgot to mention when you work with a power pole not um because it doesn't stick to um plastic one of these craft mats or splat mats is really the perfect thing to work on and i will show you why so add that out and just lay it out and then we're going to start painting so just pick up some of the power pole and just paint it over your butterfly make sure that you cover everything especially when you would like to put your items outside although i have to say i don't think this particular method of making these butterflies will hold up outside as they are going to if snow or anything lands on the wings it will definitely drag it down so when you want to do that i would suggest definitely do a wire frame for your butterflies but you can go really big with that and i'm just gonna do the opposite side so i'm sort of sandwich my butterflies or the um toothpick between the two butterflies as i said it can be getting a little bit messy that's nice to have the rag so that you can just keep on wiping your hands so with this as well, um, you can wear gloves when you work with this. Personally, I don't really like wearing the gloves. Sorry, I'm just spacing it here. Um, personally, I don't really like wearing the gloves. It's just, I, I like the feel, especially when I do sculpting with the power pole. I might start off with it, but in the end, I just go back to the um, using my fingers and really get the feel of it. So next, I'm just going to cover the outside now. Okay. 
with the power pole and the reason I do both on the insides as well is power pole also acts as a glue so whatever you use or make in power pole you actually stick together with power pole cell so you do not need another glue for that and I'm going to pick it up and quickly turn it around And I'm almost sure that had I used this on a different surface like paper or anything, I don't think I would have been able to um, pick it up as easily as what I do now. Okay. And because it's a hardener, when you're done with your paintbrush, um, I just usually have a canned fruit bottle handy. I would just pop my brush in there and that's it. And on to the next step. Now we are going to dry our um, butterfly. This might be a little bit noisy, but I'm going to use a hair dryer. And this is just an old hair dryer. I'm going to use it on low speed as well as the cool setting and I'm just going to start drying my butterfly. So one thing I want to mention when you pick it up be very careful and as I'm drying I'm going to be drying from the bottom and the, when I see the wings is nearly touching each other I'm just going to keep on flipping my butterfly around like this until it is dry enough to um, touch so I'm just going to start and then I will go off camera and finish the rest of this oh and of course now it's not plugged in so I'm just going to put this down and let me just quickly plug in my hair dryer technical issues okay let's try again On a low setting and I'm drawing from the bottom and just flip it around and keep on going from the bottom. If I see it wants to touch, I just turn around and from the bottom. So I'm gonna go off camera and just finish drawing this little button. Butterfly is dry to the touch and this is at the point where you can start um, sort of get, giving it a form but something else I would just like to show you is I'm not sure if you can really see on the um, craft mat but you can see where I've painted and this is what I like about working with the power pole you can literally just start moving your fingers over it and it pulls away so when it's transparent you know those areas are definitely dry when you get to the areas where it is a little bit thicker um, you know it might be a little bit more messier and not removing as e easily but yeah you can still um, remove it it almost this reminds me so much of the glue that i like using that 450 or yeah, I think it's a 450 glue. I never have that number right. This is why you can do it because like I mentioned before, it definitely, it does not stick to um, plastic. Best practice would be to always cover whichever area you're working on with a piece of plastic, um, even under your um, splat mat. I think they call it splat mats as well or craft mats. So then back to our little butterfly, we're just going to look at it and I think I'm going to then decide which one you would like to use as the front and which one you would like to use, which side you would like to use at the back. For the project I'm going to be using this, it doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, both sides, you will be able to see both sides. The front will just be on the outside where you have to look through from the back to the inside. So I'm going to get my pipe out and I'm just going to drape it over that. And as you can see, I can remove it as well. 
So once it has been lying like this for a um, couple of minutes, oh, almost thought I missed a spot there, but I did get it. So after I have let it lie like this for a couple of minutes, um, or maybe, yeah, I would say about a good 15 to 20 minutes, I will come back in and I will pick it up because then the shape will hold. And I will, oh, this is still a little bit too wet for that. But then I will just come in with a round tool and just, you know, further shape my wings to the shape that I would like to have it. I'm just going to squeeze those back again and see if I can get rid of those little, oh, well, you know what, it's part of the project. So there you go. And that is how you make a bugger pole butterfly. I'm quickly going to go over the other uh, methods, the different methods that I tried, um, just to show you, to get an idea what you can do with the um, power pole. I have two butterflies drawing, lesson learn. When you work with power pole, it's always best, if you can, to decant it from your original container into, uh, into a separate container and to keep that container closed as well when you're done with it and put it aside. As I was working with the hairdryer, my other butterflies that was lying on the table blew right into my small container that I decanted it in. So I quickly had to finish this one, put it together. Um, so I did it exactly the same way, dry it, and now it is just ready to be set. So let's quickly have a look at the different... Um, other butterflies that I've tried yesterday. So I had a look at a tutorial that Annette did on how to make wings and that was using um, paper towel, ordinary paper towel. So I did the frame, a wire frame for the butterfly and then I've covered it with um, the paper towel. It works, it is hot already. It still needs a little bit curing, but it is hot and um, it looks good. Although this was not the look that I was looking for. I was still looking for something more um, finer. I don't really know what the word I'm looking for, but then I realized, okay, the wireframe is not the way that I wanted to go. So the next thing I did was I have used um, the Power Pole Relief. It is a, I think it's willow bark and you can actually stretch it. It has a very, very nice texture. Um, so I've put that with the Power Pole and I didn't do the um, frame, the wire frame to outline the wings. I've only used the wire for the centerpiece and I sort of liked it, but that was still um, not the look I was going for. And I think that is more or less a similar look that I would have gotten had I used the handmade paper that I still had that I've made. So the next one that I've tried was uh, also, this is also a store-bought handmade paper. This one actually didn't turn out too bad. I just didn't care for the shape of the butterfly. It didn't really look like a butterfly. It was too long for me. But um, again, I was just scared that this white is going to disappear on the project that I have in mind. But still, I think I, I will use this definitely again. But again, transparent, not very good. Transparent power pole, not very good for outside use. So just keep that in mind. And then these are the ones that I eventually did. So as you can see, they are hard. They still have a little bit of movability in there, but I have the rounding for the shape and I have already um, bent the, the tips of the wings over last night. So I'm really happy the way that this turned out. Um, the toothpick just give it a nice little extra body in there. Oh, I forgot to mention something. When it's at this stage and you don't like the shape, so for this one, the shape on top, not too good. You can still come in at this point and you can just use your scissors and you can just cut it. 
so it's not to say now that you are done this is how it is going to be and so you can just do this oh this one i'm going to do from the back i find doing it from the back makes it different or easier to keep the shape consistent and then you can just keep on snipping away there until you have everything gone so yeah as you can see you can still work with it afterwards um, if you don't care for the shape and the reason why you can make some extra you can always come in and paint it after the fact as long as what you don't seal it well most probably if you seen it you would be able to but um just you can come in and maybe the gold wasn't the best idea but um you can come in and you can paint it the colors that you would actually need for a next project if you have this left it's always nice that when you do something like this and it is something that goes quick and I don't want to say messy because it's a little bit messy but it's not that messy is make some extras you will always have some for a later project or even you know build another project around the ones that you have so there you go so you can come in painted the color that you want this one has a um i can never find the camera so the gold gives it that little bit of a shimmer to it as well there you go and then even if you want to um i'm just going to grab another color here This is burnt sienna, maybe not the right color, but let's try it. I was looking for something darker, but this will work too. And you can also come in and you can just write on the um, edges. You can give it that little bit of definition. So yeah, it's it's a matter of playing around with a couple of things. If you have other metallics, you can do you know really paint how butterflies are, paint in those little extra wings that they have. So that is our little power pole. Um, butterflies oh I forgot to mention one thing what I did with one of the butterflies is um, we have a maple tree just outside our front door and it has these little seeds on so what I did was I took some of those seeds the other day and I dried a couple of them to use and I thought oh wait let me just put them in there so you can even put layer something in between the two sheets of paper i think if you use something like this this is also two layers um it will come through but i don't think it will be as noticeable but think about the possibilities if you have something like this and you add um, something you know layer something in between the two layers so this one i think if you just give it a nice little red around the edge it would be really looking good yeah so that is our butterflies our power pole butterflies the first component of the project and over the next couple of months i will come back to these butterflies show you how i'm working with it or the progress of the um, project hope you've enjoyed spending time with me in the studio today and always remember the world of reality has its limits the world of imagination is boundless